Welcome to episode two of the How to Begin Bow Hunting series. Brody here with Wallow, and on this channel we bring you unbiased hunting product reviews, tips, tactics, and other information to help you find total success in the field. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, and for more information about today's video, check the show notes below. Today we're discussing different bow options and the best bows for the price, the importance of accessories, and where to buy your bow. As a beginner, you're probably wondering how much you should spend on that first bow. Are you gonna buy the Pro Series bow, the Mid Series bow? What's the difference in the price points of those bows? You're gonna find out right here. In this first segment, we're jumping back over to No Limits Archery, and Phil and Bo are telling us all about Pro and Mid Series bows. The biggest difference is, in, in my opinion, is technology, okay? A lot of the mid price point bows, they're great. They're f absolutely fabulous bows, but generally what I'm seeing out of those bows is they may be a year or two years old technology. Now, I'm not an engineer. I can't build a bow that's that good, okay? And it'll always outshoot me. But as you step up into higher end bows, you're getting later to, you know, more current technology. Um, you're get, maybe getting um, better machining, uh, better manufacturing processes, better materials. Okay. Like I said, I'm no engineer. I just work on the bows and shoot them. Um, so like I said, the lower end bows are going to shoot just as good, you know, or at least better than I can shoot um, as maybe even a higher end bow. It just depends on, on what you're looking for. Um, I think that uh, a, a guy just getting into the sport, if he picks up a $400 fully built bow, um, can he get out in the woods and be successful with it? Absolutely, sure. absolutely. Yeah, the, the, uh, the only thing I would add, because Bo's I think spot on with that answer is, you know, yeah, it's the bells and whistles, but at the same token, if somebody comes in and they say, well, I really don't, I don't want to limit myself on budget, I want to demo shoot everything, and they shoot everything, and they say, and then, then we look at the price tag, and they say, ah, that might be a touch much. Well now, a lot of these high-end manufacturers are creating bow models that are, you know, I would say in that mid-price category, like Bo said, incorporating some technologies that may be similar to the high-end bow a few years, um, you know, previous to that, but a, a few less bells and whistles, and with that, the price tag comes down. Sometimes the, um, the efficiency of a bow or the energy that, you know, the speed, the, the, the sexy term, right, with, with archery is how fast is it, what's the IBO? Uh, Honestly, some of the mid to the four to six hundred, four to seven hundred price bows perform as good yeah. through the chronograph as the high end stuff. It's just some other bells and whistles you get with the newer like bows. So just maybe tighter tolerances on machining, better materials, a few extra bells and whistles, and and that's the biggest difference I would say. Yeah, you know? a, a lot of manufacturers may produce their flagship aluminum bow, let's say, and then they'll release another bow at a better price point. And a lot of times you may be getting very similar limb pockets, limbs and cams and string quality, but what they end up doing is instead of going to a fully machined riser, they may go to a cast riser. So it's poured in the mold. Tolerances aren't quite as tight, but overall the, the quality of 80% of, no, of the bow is as top notch as their their highest flagship bows out there so remember a lot of the time the pro series bows that are launched year after year is the newest technology offered by that company your midline bows may be a year or two old and then what else you're paying for are the bells and whistles of that bow the speed the let off all the different features that lead you to have more comfort shooting maybe will cost you a little bit more in the long run before we jump into the next segment i wanted to take a second and show you the different parts of a bow this is the quiver I'm gonna take this off because it's detachable and we'll be able to see the parts of the bow a little bit better um, the quiver obviously holds the arrows um, you got your top cam and your bottom cam your limbs these are split limbs not all bows have split limbs riser obviously your grip here this is your stabilizer it's aftermarket it's not always on bows but a lot of guys use stabilizers and I'm one of them this is a wrist sling your rest. This is a drop away rest here. Um, there's a lot of different types of rest. We'll get to those in another video. This is your sight and then this is your peep sight. So you're actually going to look through this peep sight 
into this larger site and aim at your target and that's how you're more accurate. Not all guys use peep sights either, but we highly recommend a peep sight into the real sight onto the target, more accuracy that way. You have um, your string suppressors or string dampeners uh, here, here, and then this one on the main string here. So, all right, let's jump over into the segment with Phil and Bo. I think we start with going back to those initial questions as to what, um, what terrain you're gonna be hunting and what style you're gonna be hunting in. Somebody that's gonna be sitting primarily in a tree stand, maybe doesn't need as durable of equipment as somebody that's gonna be, you know, hunting high country in the West. Uh, what I mean by that is if you drop your bow, even just climbing up, just a, sh a short drop just out of your hand, some accessories may not hold up to that. Mm -hmm. So um, the durability is, is one question. With, obviously, as you go up in price category again, you're usually getting products that are more durable, again, the materials are better, um, tolerances are tighter, and bells and whistles again. So it, it it's all kind of comes full circle from those first few questions because a fully adjustable slider, multi-pin slider style site that's very popular in the West may not be ideal for somebody who's gonna be sitting in a tree stand. So that's where <clears throat> it's really getting to know the customer in that short time you have as best you can and, uh, and showing them the options because in, in my opinion, it's something like you said, if, if I was on a budget, I would probably go with a good mid-price bow and get really good accessories out the gate and know that if I felt I had the option to go up later, then yeah, I keep my accessories on the new bow and I just bump up to a new bow in whatever, two, four, or five years, whatever it might be. So there's a lot to it. And honestly, accessories is almost an animal of its own with selection and options. And I'll, I mean, if Bo, you got anything to add too with... For me, when it comes to accessories, there's two things I never skimp on and that's the rest of the site. Okay, if, if the rest can't hold up or is constantly shifting, Obviously, it affects accuracy. Right. Same thing with the site. So um, those are the two things, like I said, that I, I never skimp on. Now, quivers, um, for a Western big game hunter, a lot of times we're doing a lot of hiking, right? The quiver's mounted to our bow. We never know when we're going to encounter a, an elk or potentially a mule deer, depending upon your hunting style. Generally, the quiver's always mounted. Whitetail hunters, there's a lot of those guys that like to get in their ground blind or their tree stand and pop their quiver off, okay? So certain quivers will give you different features, whether it be to pop it off or it always stays mounted. So that might be an, an, uh, a question that I have to ask them, you know, hey, exactly what kind of hunting are we doing? You know, we're going back to that same question. And are we always going to shoot with the quiver on or are we always going to shoot with it off? But like I said, my sights, my rest, I never skimp on those. Stabilizers, I like to tell most guys I don't get too geeked up over stabilizers. Um, as long as I can add and subtract weight, okay, to help the bow hold or balance the way I want it to. Right? Yeah, and like, I think anybody new, I always encourage them to shoot the bow without a stabilizer for a little while because once you introduce a stabilizer, now you have, you've had your baseline starting without it, you introduce it, you can see that hopefully it's slowing pin movement down or uh, making it less, right? So if they don't know because they just slap it on at the beginning and everything's new to them, it's hard to get the right one picked the first time. Um, the other thing is, is on-site selection, second, third axis, in, in all of our opinion back here, the adjustability, to make sure you can adjust that is, Paramount. Yeah, on yeah. a site. So I, I would take a $120 site that still has second, third axis adjustment over something that's potentially a lot more that doesn't have it. Mm -hmm. Just because as, as much of a pain in the butt it is on some of these sites to adjust it, we, we always, it, it's something I think we do very well is making sure that it gets adjusted right, assuming it has adjustability. Because that one thing alone, like Bo was saying, as far from accuracy is if you handicap yourself up front by not having the ability to adjust second, third axis, then you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, your ceiling's gonna be very low. So anybody who's not familiar with that, um, there's the levels that we use to, to adjust people's bows are made by Hamsky Archery. I encourage you to just look them up on YouTube, look at the levels and they explain in detail what each axis is and why it's important. Yeah. It can get complicated. That, that's a great point. Third axis, you know, talking about that specifically, you can make an absolute perfect shot. Your pin could be exactly where it needs to be on the animal, but if that third axis isn't set, yeah. you're, you're already throwing in some error up front, even with that perfect shot. A little recap after that last clip. Don't skimp on accessories, especially your rest and your sight. It's imperative that those two are top of the line. You always want to get the nicest rest and nicest sight. That's going to help your accuracy. Um, other accessories like a quiver, your stabilizer, your wrist sling, 
not always as imperative, but they are nice to have, so check those out. Really what you get with paying higher dollar for accessories is more durability, better, um, better materials, things like that. They'll last longer. You don't have to do that. So where do you want to buy this first bow? You're going to go to Dick's Sporting Goods, a big box account, or a pro shop? Well, check out the next clip as Phil and Bo give you their breakdown of why you should buy from an archery shop. In my opinion, it's, it's pretty simple from the level of service you're going to get here. Um, specialized service really so there are some of these manufacturers that we have to go to their warranty technical school before they bring us on as dealers and they do that so that we make sure that we know the ins and outs the, the little intricacies of different bow models and different technologies that the general consumer is not going to know so from the knowledge base a lot of times up front we get it before the customers even understand it or, or have seen it uh, in addition to that you know, you can buy your, your plug and play bow that's a, a kit bow here. You can buy one in a box store. But there's a reason why pro shops are the only ones that can sell the pro line bows in many categories, in m many cases on, on across the board. And that's just because the level of attention that, that's needed to make sure those are performing optimally. So yeah. uh, myself, I, I don't think there's any problem with going to a big box store um, to pick up a bow. The only downside is, is they've got a lot of different departments, okay? And if they're lacking personnel in a particular department, they may just shift somebody. So when you go to a big box store, you know, you may get a guy that's been in the industry, archery industry specifically for an extended period of time, and he may know what he's doing. Or you may have just got somebody that's just slid in from footwear or camo, okay? So you never really know what kind of technician you're gonna get going into a big box. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with it if that's you know your, your, local, sure. your local dealer, if, if, if the closest place is, is, a, is a big box, and, and that's the way you can get into archery, by all means, do it. But I would definitely ask your technician some questions and see if you're getting the guy in that department. Um, but other than that, you know, you go to your local shop, like like we are here, archery is what we do. That's that's really our only department, right? So the attention to detail, like Phil said, the specialized service, that's what we really offer. Pro shops are trained in a lot of different bows, a lot of the main brands. A Bowtech, an archery shop that sells Bowtech is trained in these specific types of bows. You're not going to get that at Sportsman's Warehouse or Dick's Sporting Goods or places like that. It's not a bad place to buy bows there, but remember another thing that Bo said was they may have pulled somebody out of the footwear department to help you with the bow that day. So you don't always have the person at big box accounts that is really highly trained in archery. So remember that. Archery shops are going to give you a little bit better treatment. They're going to be a little bit more knowledgeable. So we recommend checking out your local pro shop. Just wanted to give one more shout out to Phil and Bo out there at No Limits Archery in Denver, Colorado. They're hitting their 10 year anniversary next month in April. And it's you've been a big help, guys. Thank you so much for helping us out with these first two videos. Check out the Alpha Bow Hunting Challenge at alphabowhunting.com. Phil and Bo put on a great event all over the US. I think there's five or six different events. It's a really cool archery opportunity. So stay tuned, check out the website. For more tips on how to begin bow hunting, check out episode three and subscribe to the channel. Check out our social media and remember, wallow the outdoors.